What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda here. I just finally received my new 2020 MacBook Air. It just came, comes directly from China, and it comes in a box like this. We are going to do a true unboxing here, and then I will give you my thoughts on the new MacBook Air. I'm pretty excited about this because I have been a big fan of the new MacBook Airs ever since they came out, you know, 2018 and 2019 because they were uh, the really the only improvement they've made on them in a really really long time and it was really the improvements that we needed you know retina screen and things like that but there were a few things that people critiqued namely the keyboard which i had the original macbook 12 inch too and i will say that i never really had a huge issue with that keyboard yes the travel wasn't particularly impressive and the keyboard was a little flat it's a little slappy when you're typing but it seemed to work just fine and i never had any problems with debris getting in there or anything like this beautiful box here this is the 13 inch macbook air and it is only one upgrade above the minimum uh, so the base model is 999 dollars but it comes with the dual core i3 10th generation intel processor if you spring for getting these lids off there's like they're so tightly fit it's uh stuck anyway um so if you do spend the extra 100 bucks you get this one and this is an intel 10th generation quad core i5 and you get a pretty significant improvement in performance with that one and the dual core is probably just fine for my use it's probably great for web surfing and doing documents and things like that but every now and then i do you know splice together some videos for this channel export them and while i'm not really waiting 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 you know uh to do something else just for that video it is kind of nice to have that extra speed and you know anytime that there's a little bit of a lag a little bit of a hiccup when i'm working on stuff whether it's powerpoint or whatever it kind of frustrates me i just want it to work and so my perspective on these laptops is always from the perspective of the general user who doesn't want to geek out about all the specs he, i just want things to run right i just feel like i'm like 95 percent of america that i don't even care what it is and i know people talk about like integrated graphics and that's not as good and blah 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 and i know a lot of people are talking about the fan here is not connected directly to the processor to cool it down it's kind of this like tangential thing so it's kind of uh does this indirect cooling yeah i get it but if it works that's all i care about uh this processor does have uh thermal problems in that it is throttled at 100 degrees it throttles back and so you're kind of capped out at that there's software that makes sure that uh, depending on what temperature it hits that's what it caps at uh, i've seen guys that have tried to do some cooling on these some additional cooling and they just uh, find out that it's still capped you know so we get that we also get the little booklet of paperwork here oh and then you also get the stickers in space gray these almost always used to be white and then we also have a charging block right here now this block actually looks smaller than my last generation and you can see here it's kind of that standard apple and it's got the flip out prongs here but on the uh side here it's a 30 watt usb-c single that goes right in there and a very long cable so 30 watt now i'm just going to open this sucker up for you here i do love the space gray uh, i actually had a gold macbook 12 and that was cool i dig dug it Ooh. yeah baby firing up man i do love this big flat panel glass now the screen doesn't go quite to the edges like a lot of kind of minimalist you know sleek laptops but it comes pretty close and a lot better than the old one which that silver had that silver bezel that was really kind of ugly um but there's a couple other things that i think as an average user we will notice so uh one of the things that we won't notice is i think it's like 0.7 millimeters thicker and that was for the new internals presumably but i don't think you'll be able to tell that nor any type of weight difference a couple of things that i think you will be able to tell a difference on is this trackpad so as i'm going to go down here and click it you can see how big this trackpad is and it's my understanding that this trackpad is 20 percent larger than the old trackpad now that's pretty awesome because look at the size of it i can put my whole hand there so if you're doing multi-finger gestures you're kind of moving things around i think that is going to make it that much easier to uh, use it's just going to make it that much more comfortable to work on every day for me i actually don't really like trackpads despite how awesome 
Apple trackpads are, and they are the best of any computer I've ever used, I still like having a mouse. But I've noticed that when I'm on the road and I can't put a mouse, I'm on an airplane tray table or something like that, working in a hotel, didn't bring a mouse with me, and I work on the trackpad, this is the only one that I really like. A lot of my previous computers, including my ThinkPad, which was a good laptop, the trackpad was so bad on that, I always had a mouse because it was almost uh, just, it was almost unusable, to be really honest. So the trackpads here don't make me feel like I have to carry a mouse, even though in a lot of cases I do, I carry a magic mouse with it. The other thing that I've been told is that the speakers are upgraded and that they sound a lot better. And the uh, most important thing here that I think people will care about are the keys themselves. So let's take a look at these keys very closely and let's compare them to the previous generation, uh, to this 2018 MacBook Air that I have and see if these are any better. Here are the keys on the original MacBook. And while the side keys here are perfectly flat, what you might be able to see is that the letter keys have just a slight concavity to them. You know, the edges are slightly raised. They're not uncomfortable, but that actually helps you identify what are letter keys and what are function keys. But what you can see here is that there is probably less than a millimeter of separation between the deck and the top of the key and this is what it's like when the key drops down and i would say it doesn't even quite go flush with the metal there now i actually don't think that these keys feel that bad and you know whatever butterfly mechanism that they're using in this version of the keyboard uh, seems to work pretty well i actually thought well maybe one side of the key would dip down but as i press on this side you can see the whole key kind of traveling down uh, in parallel. So that's actually pretty nice. Um, does it have a lot of travel? No, because it's not even probably a millimeter above the chassis here. And because it doesn't go flush or below the chassis, it's probably only, you know, transiting maybe half a millimeter. I don't think it's the worst thing ever, but this one has the new magic keyboard and I have been playing around with this a little bit and you can probably see the difference here. You know, first of all, I would say that they are shaped to the touch without moving anything just about the same way. But if you might, you might be able to see here that I think they appear to be a little higher than the old ones, just a smidge. I mean, we're talking about a very uh, small difference here with the scissor mechanism. They're a little higher. And when I push them in, they seem to go flush with the metal uh, frame here. And so it advertises a full millimeter of travel and i don't doubt that because i feel like these keys start just a smidge higher and go just a smidge deeper so they are pretty nice and they feel pretty good and i you know i probably don't feel like i'm slapping but on this they really really feel like you know standard laptop keys in a much better way so this keyboard i think is improved the other thing that they have changed which i don't know is a huge improvement to me is like these arrows that are now in a t-shape uh these used to be full size on the old keyboard and i guess people were having trouble when they'd reach their hand here figuring out which key was which now i've never had that problem and i don't care that they've changed it but i never had an issue with the first one so to me i don't know that you know it makes any difference but if that was something that bothered you from this previous version then uh fear not it's improved here so i will say between that and this very large trackpad Man, I think this is great. Everything else seems very similar. It's kind of the same. It's going to feel very much like your existing MacBook Air. But with the 10th generation processor and more storage. So on my old MacBook Air, I had 128 gigs because I was really using the base model. The base model now has 256 gigs, which is really nice because, you know, storage goes so quickly, especially when you're doing some video work. But between that the new keyboard, trackpad, this key arrangement, the new ge generation of processor, the battery life. I think it's all the subtle changes that really make for a better experience on the whole. And so I think it's really worth it. And at $1,000, this is really competitive with a lot of other laptops out there. And so I don't really find it to be something expensive where you're kind of really paying that Apple premium in many cases. So if you want to pick up the new 2020 MacBook Air, I think you're going to really like it. I'll put a link to it in the description below. Peter Von Panda, out. Thank <laughs> you.